Fred, hello. Hey, Will. It has been far too long since we've done Will and Fred's Excellent yes. Adventures, and I wanted yes. to take you on an adventure. Sure. As a fellow best friend, I feel there's no story greater than Homer's Odyssey, but if there had to be a runner-up, it would be the story of the Mishima family. I, I personally think what they need to do is a crossover between just Heihachi and Guile. I'd, I'd watch that. Like, I'd watch right? that. Paul, would be, Paul Phoenix would be allowed to guest star. It would be who, whose stylist has the best gel, right? <laughs> like, the, these guys, fighting game characters have crazy hair, and Heihachi... He's the Mac Daddy. He's well. He's the granddaddy, quite Fred, literally. I would yeah. like to show you Tekken Seven, and not just show you Tekken Seven on PC, which is I'm playing, uh, which I've mm-hmm. been really enjoying the online and uh, the offline arcade. But I right. really want to show you the story of the Mishima Saga. Yep. I've not seen this. This is all brand new for me. So I wanted right. to go through this first with you as an experience. Sure. And part of the plan was we would talk about like Tekken and fighting games and just generally some of the design and story elements that go into them. I would really like that. So come okay. with me now on a journey through time and space to the Mishima household. Off we go. Oh, yeah, we'll go middle of the way. Yep. It is a lot harder playing while you're talking. Just so keep that in mind. <laughs> Strings of Destiny. They're playing a, a beautiful... Oh. Letter from my son a few years back. Aww. Scribbled on it were the words, I love you. Oh, best dad. So happy, I cried. Aww. At the time, you are so insincere, Will. This is genuine. One of the things that is very nice about this story mode is father and son. Tekken 7 is, you know, the seventh game in the series. Well, past yeah. the seventh game in the series. And there's a lot of backstory. <laughs> what could you possibly mean? A lot of it is messed up, too. So, Fuck. having a story mode... Hang on a sec, Fred. Mm-hmm. That, was a, that was a message from... Uh, from uh, Devil Jin to his dad, saying, yeah. I will, one day I will tear you to pieces. Well, actually... Here's the problem. <laughs> you just bunted a kid. <laughs> yeah. Jesus. But that's not that's not um that's not Kazuya. That's Heihachi. Oh, so I'm playing right. as um, I'm playing as the young and so. Yes, because Heihachi believes in a very specific kind of training. Oh. During the story mode, you can exercise. You can execute four preset moves by holding a story assist button. Ooh. Oh, that's a really neat. That's a really neat touch. So instead okay. of forcing you to have to learn um, proper fighting game technique in the story mode, it pre-cans some of your moves. So if this isn't your main character, but you're playing as them all the same, it gives you that kind of. Yeah, that's actually a really neat touch, right? Because um, there are a number of players who get into fighting games but aren't really like fighting game players or mm. haven't, ouch. Yeah. Um, haven't really learned all of the technical nuances to a fighting game engine. Cause even if you're a fighting game player, every game's a little bit distinct. Oh man, this is so loving. Hey, Hatchie's gonna take his son, maybe go get some ice cream, you know, and when he recovers, he'll tuck him into bed and they'll be best dad and son friends. One thing Tekken has never shied away from is the audacious. <laughs> Fred, <laughs> Fred, I have to push buttons to throw my son into a ravine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and ladies and gentlemen, if you're hearing the clackety clack sound, I am using a proper fight stick, so I'm not I'm not half inching this. Right. Um, oh my goodness. So number one, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> Kazuya will remember this. I got an achievement for throwing my kid. Oh, I'm a bad and, parent. And that, oh. But this that scene is so pivotal to the first three or four games in the Tekken storyline because it sets the stage for the early franchise. Yeah. So having new players play through it and experience it um, gives them a point to 
glom onto and hook onto for the rest of the characters and the rest of the story. Very much so, right. but actually asking someone to push the buttons to chuck a child to their death. Spoiler, the kid doesn't die. Because uh, I don't know if this episode would be long enough to cover the entire Mishima family saga. Right, but most of the... Like, most of Tekken, even if it's not about the Mishima family, revolves around the things they're doing. So, I often wonder if fighting game designers, or at least the narrative designers, have that almost... Mm-hmm. Um, what's the term? A uh, soap opera problem where they have this cast of characters and the characters have to persist in a certain manner. Like, you can't right. just kill off a character because if it's a popular one on the pro scene, you still well, gotta make it work on the on the narrative scene, right? What's interesting is Tekken in particular is yeah. ha- was willing to retire characters temporarily or longer because the characters were quote unquote dead, right? Like, Skipping ahead of it, yeah. The three major Mishimas, and I'll get to uh, Jun and the rest later. But yeah. are Heihachi, who is the patriarch of the family, mm-hmm. until his until his father shows up in one of the later games. Um, um, we just we are glazing over the fact that they had to beat an Egyptian god in the last Iron Fist tournament to save the world. That happened. Yes. But in order to make that Egyptian god spawn, uh, Jin, who is the grandson of Heihachi, mm-hmm. basically had to screw the world over. Yeah. He had to make things so bad. Boy, that, did he. <laughs> yeah. So, but going back to my earlier point, yeah. there are, there's Heihachi, grandfather, right? Kazuya, father, and Jin, son, right? Yeah. These three are kind of the main characters of the early part of the franchise. Yeah. And uh, at the end of two, okay, at the end of one, yeah. canonically, Kazuya is the winner of the tournament, takes over the Mishima Zaibatsu, which is a mega corporation mm-hmm. from Heihachi. Yeah. And in retaliation for what Heihachi did when Kazuya was a child, he throws Heihachi off a mountain. Ha, take that, you old bugger. At the start of the second game, yeah. Kazuya receives a letter which says, you should have found a bigger mountain. <laughs> Heihachi, at the end of the second game, retakes the corporation and then throws Kazuya into a volcano. Sometimes you just got to one-up your dad. In three, Kazuya is not a playable character because he's dead. So going looping back to your earlier point that fighting games generally don't retire characters, I agree. Tekken happens to be the one game that is a noticeable exception. Do you think that's because oh. they have Hish- uh, Hishima, uh, Mishima-style fighters that take over their role, perhaps on the pro scene? Um, probably, because 3 is where Jean is first introduced as a playable character. Yeah. And while his mechanical properties are not were not the same as Kazuya's, they okay. were very similar. And all three of the Mishima characters... Um, had a lot of commonality in broad strokes. Like, okay. it had, for, the, many of them had the same general moves with slightly different properties. Way cool. So, for example, Heihachi um, had a move called the Hell Sweep, mm. which was just a... He'd do a little dash forward, duck down, and sweep. Okay. But he could sweep multiple times. Ah, I know it um, well. Jean has the Hell Sweep, at least in three, right? I'm going back to kind of highlight those differences. Um, has the Hell Sweep, but he couldn't throw multiple low sweeps. He would he would throw one low sweep and then one kind of uh, what's called mid sweep, which would be one that hit you okay. where you had to block a standing, right? So, if you don't mind my jumping ahead mm-hmm. a little bit, you could mm-hmm. almost use that narrative jump to quote-unquote patch a character. So if you have well, a yeah. move set that's particularly popular but slightly overpowered you know the son of the next character cad you, you could you could tweak and, and jump them a little bit right you could under the old paradigm of fighting game design right what yeah. we're seeing nowadays more in fighting games is actual patches while the game is still out right so nowadays when a character is overpowered they directly tweak you know uh frame rate or hit points as a character or damage or something like that yeah but back before uh that kind of patching was popular, you would instead see 
Like, yeah, there was some amount of tweaking that was happening between games. Oh. I'm not sure how much of it was consciously as a result of... Sorry to interrupt. Oh. I just wanted mm -hmm. to point out that these people working around the table are obviously, like, you know, IT guys, and yet they still get the sweet badass armor. I'm just, I'm very happy that that's a thing that exists. Well, yeah, but then again, you know, this is crunch time, right? So they don't get to go home either. Oh, um, true that. Uh, but they get, like, a $5 dinner allowance. And let me tell you, Mishima Corp, their cafeteria, second to none. Let me tell you. <laughs> one thing I admire a lot about Tekken is it's one of the few fighting game franchises where arguably Zomain character <laughs> is 80 yeah. or 70-something. And right? he really grew into his look. Like, that yeah, porno tash right? that he had in the beginning did not suit him. And, like, Heihachi, ever since, I think, the first game... His one of his default basic non-command throws, right? Yeah, is a power bomb, a, a <laughs> leaping power bomb, right? And you you just don't picture you know the the old guy archetype to do stuff like that. He just beat that guy with a door. Yeah. Right. Like again, this is a man who said you should have found a bigger mountain. Although props to all those um, uh, unpaid interns who just dodged a missile. <laughs> right. But like Tekken has been, and, and it's funny because we're noticing that fighting games are doing a little bit more story content now uh, in general, right? Like do you look think... at the Injustice games. Yeah. Do you, do you say at... that um, the outcry of uh, Street Fighter V's lack of story helped kind of push that? I'm not sure because the trend towards having story predate Street Fighter V, right? Like, if, if we were looking at games, there's Injustice, which, you know, is gen was generally seen as having a pretty good story. Yeah, it's... And not just, not just pretty good story for a fighting game. Yeah, uh, I played uh, um, pretty... Injustice 1 through, and the story for that was really engaging, despite it yeah, being a right? Mortal Kombat-style fighter. Well, yeah, and, and it starts with a caveat of... I'm like, going to punch the shit out of the like... people now for you, so... Oh, quick time event. Yeah. Oh. What am I doing? Oh wow, generic no-name guard against Tehachi. I oh, wonder how this right. is going to end. Oh, sorry. Yeah, that's what we were after. Get a noogie! Get What's a noogie! What's interesting too is, while the mechanics and engine have been tweaked over the years, like the last time I played regularly was T3 and Tekken Tag Tournament, and yet most of your moveset is still very much familiar to me, and I'm pretty sure I could play Heihachi, uh, like, it, you know, almost in pick up and play format, in spite of it having been like 10 years since I played it regularly. See, I don't play Hitachi for anything. As I was saying before, like I play, um, right. I play Lee, Lee. So, yeah. So this is very strange and alien for me. Right. Whereas, like Heihachi wasn't my main, but oh, Tekken th three. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. I'm just killing these poor buggers. Well, I mean, they have no names, right? <laughs> Dude, the you, internship you are, program. You are Heihachi. They are nameless pawns. Oh, I proper broke him. Yeah, and, and the game certainly has succeeded at feeling very visceral, right? Oh, it's got that meat that the Tekken games have always had that I've loved. Yeah, right? Um, and Namco, Namco's two 3D franchises, 3D fighter franchises, have always been technically quite good yeah but tekken has always felt a little meatier whereas i wonder Soul if it's Cal the, uh, sorry i uh, forgive me i'm uh, i'm quite coffeeed up and tekken makes me very overexcitable i wonder mm -hmm. if it's because like tekken everything has a direct correlation you know you have left punch right punch left kick right Dude. kick and all yeah. the timings are like impact and rhythm based rather than kind of the the more fluid like speed inputs of say street fighter or mortal kombat I think part of it too is Tekken was driven by. Um, okay, and I'll compare it to Soul Cal because same okay. company, right? Um, I think part of it too is Soul Cal is weapon based, and there's just something about people having an intuitive feel that weapons are more fluid in terms of how they should be animated and how they should feel. Um, so I'm getting my ass handed to me here. You can talk. Yeah, well, you can always use the story assist, right? <laughs> Canned combos are 
Noogie! I I've yeah. been totally using the story assists. I'm still getting more. Yeah, why not, right? Game. Like, I mean, it's actually a really nice touch to have the option of not having to be great at fighting games and still enjoy a fighting game for its for its story mode. Yeah, and that's um, really cool. I actually kind of think more companies and more games might want to consider that because um, there are a lot of people who have been fighting game fans at one point or another Darn it. Um, who are still fans of franchises but no, don't necessarily have the time or energy to get really into it. Oh, shenanigans! You... Oh well. <laughs> I don't play as Hitachi. Hitachi, Jesus. That's a very different <laughs> game. I don't play as Hihachi. Well, like, okay, going back to an earlier point we had, and we are jumping around a little, right? Um, Just... One of the neat things that they did in Tekken 4 uh, was at the end of Tekken 3, yeah. Jean decides that his family is really messed up and he hates them all, and so he unlearns Mishima style karate and d adopts what the game called traditional karate. And they completely redid Gene between three and four, right? There's that flying power bomb. Not bad yep. for a basic move. Um, oh, time to die. That's this is this is going to oh, be yeah. bad. Yeah. So they introduced supers. Oh, okay. I missed. Ah. Fred! <laughs> Fred! She's, she's beating me up, Fred! So, yeah. This is not how the Mishima story is meant to go! Yeah, but fortunately... Oh. Uh oh Fortunately, if you ever lose, it doesn't count, right? Like, yeah, totally. The only canon ending is one where you get to keep going. Oh, that is just not on. Someone's getting powerbombed. Stop dodging! <laughs> Nina! This is not on, Nina. Yeah, I went, does the game also have a tutorial? Uh, Crawley? I think it's in the... Probably, right? I, I didn't check, and I actually haven't picked it up. What was that? Fred, she just spat at me and then kicked my ass. That's yes. not okay. People are going to think I'm garbage at Tekken. Well, you've already admitted you haven't played Heihachi, and I think it's I think it's totally fair. If you're not familiar with the character in a fighting game, it's really hard. Um, and that's not a criticism of the player, it's just that's how fighting games are. They are um, fun. Or, earlier today, I was talking with another friend about what is the hardest genre of game generally to get into. And for many years, I would have said fighting games. I don't think that's true anymore, but fighting games are still one of the hardest genres to get into. Right. Um, I think MOBAs might be more unforgiving. Yeah, MOBAs Mostly. have a really high, um, uh, what's the term for it? Assumed learning. Well, that and, like, fighting games are probably more mechanically difficult to learn, but you also have to learn context and coordination in a MOBA, which you don't in most fighting games. Oh my freaking life, Fred! You lose. Mm. Happens. <laughs> Will and Fred's excellent adventure, or Will gets the poo beaten out of him well, by I mean, Nina. Like, Groundhog Day is a form of adventure, right? You just keep doing, experiencing the same thing over and over and over. Yeah, that's what she got me with last time. Yeah. See, uh, Lee's, a, well, at least the way I play Lee is as a rushdown character, so. Right. Have you, like, have you ever gone into like really learning the mechanics of Tekken? I have actually. So Okay. Like with Lee I know which uh, moves have frame advantage and I know Yeah, right. And you know which strings hit mid or hit high or hit yeah. low, right? Yeah. Like, Lee's um, got some dirty ones which go under. Yeah, like the thing what I'd be interested to know is does Heihachi still have a wave dash? Because I, I just haven't played the franchise in a long time. And you know what I mean by wave dash, right? Uh, I will answer that question honestly when I'm not having Nina kick seven shades out of me. I think she's on nine shades, actually. Ha! Oh, no. ah. oh, that was not what I meant to do. Because while you're doing the rage attacks, you, you know, just like with um, Blood... What's it called? Blood Revolution? Or... Mm-hmm. Oh, my God, dude. I've not even scratched her! 
I am literally less offensive than a hangnail at this point to Nina. Power bomb, power bomb, power bomb! <laughs> I love how that's not even a command throw. I'm just I'm cheaping it now. If I have to just keep getting it with this freaking story. Of... <laughs> story assist. Okay. In your so face. one of the one of the So yeah, the Wind God Fist is, is your friend. Um No! <laughs> this okay. episode of Will and Fred Will so is terrible at this One of the things I would suggest, uh, because this was true for a long time and may still also be true of the, friend, of, of the current iteration of the game, was 1-1-2 uh, one, one, was, or like left punch, left punch, right punch. I know um, left punch, left punch, right punch! No, no, I'm good. <laughs> let me finish the properties, right? Um, the thing was, the 1-1 one, one is safe if you stop on 1-1. One, one. And 1 1 2 is not safe, but you usually have enough time to actually see if the first two punches are connecting before committing to the second, to the to two. I'm just, I'm just cheaping my way through it. This was meant to be a, a hilarious hot take on Tekken 2's. Tekken 2? On Tekken 7's Seven. story mode. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's still hilarious. Yeah, yeah, hilarious for you watching me get my. Fight. My, uh. My fighting game cred kicked in. I'm actually quite surprised that they made the second fight so difficult in the story mode game. Uh, well, I put it onto medium, so I think it assumes a level of skill, especially with the Mishima family. Right. <laughs> Vengeance is mine! Whoa. That's a lot of damage. What I'm not seeing on the on on my end yeah. is how your rage art charges. Like, I'm not uh, seeing a bar or anything like that to show... Well, in 2v2, it's, um... 2v2? Gee. In... Uh, versus. Yeah. It triggers at a certain health. Oh, okay. So while some characters have their own, uh, their own mechanics, like Akuma's in this, and he has right. a super mechanic as well, so he right. charges up a super bar and he'll bust right. out some sick moves. But for the rest, it's just, you know, rage tw triggers when you're at, uh, I want to say 20% health? Sure. And I sincerely apologise to the people at home if the clackety clackety clack of my panic fighting at the end was uh, overpowering. Uh, one of the one most wonderful things about fighting game storytelling is how guns are meaningless. <laughs> it's so true! <laughs> and, and you just like, why do they even bother arming people? Like, yeah. the characters who use weapons are generally quite inferior with that one. It's like, how to, how to get yourself killed in the Tekken franchise in two easy moves. Pick up a gun, oh. point it. Okay, like, bringing a, knife, bringing a gun to a fist fight is a bad move in fighting games. I'd also like to point out that that was a hostile takeover. Eh? Eh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not, you're not gonna give me any points for that one? No? Yeah. So... <laughs> <laughs> like, and, and then sometimes it's just like, why, why are they holding a fighting game? <laughs> why are they holding a fighting tournament? I, I think because, it's just what they do, right? Like, um, it's one of those things where at least in, at least in Street Fighter, I'm willing to accept the proposition that in that universe, the only way to improve is to challenge yourself by fighting the best in the world. Yeah. There's no other way to actually hone your craft. Yeah, that's the idea. You know, the, right. the Street Fighter tournament is the best of the best. Right, and it's not. And, and for some characters like Ryu, it's literally that's how he practices. Yeah. Nothing else works. But okay, for this. but here, <laughs> and I know there is a plot-driven reason why Heihachi wants to lure the great, the greatest fighters in the world out using the King of Iron Fist tournament. Yeah, I get that. but. You know, you can't really but, imagine him sitting around. All right, so I'm going to skip ahead from the story elements to a bit more fighty fight, if that's all right, good sir. Sure. Because I need to uh, play a character that you main, right? Because oh, you just want to skip to. Oh, sweet! They're right. actually. I forgot they used to freaking speed launch these guys. Oh, like, like, okay, Heihachi gets many wonderful moments of I am so badass in in the franchise. 
and <laughs> it's just that's so cool oh yeah, man I get to great. play this again in Tekken 7 this is great yeah, and, th- th- this is, and I think this FMV is straight out of Tekken 4 yeah right? I can, like, I don't I can even, even see the interlacing yeah <laughs> oh dick oh you're playing as Kazuya during that fight Yeah. Oh, I forgot about that. It's like um absorb counter almost. Yeah, like one of the things that um seems to be a little bit less uh prevalent right now while you're playing that used to be a big thing in Tekken was the use of parries and counters. I would totally Where, agree with like, you that that is like, most certainly a thing. Because, like, counters, just for the audience, are, are moves where you throw the move, and if you get attacked by something you can counter while you, you're throwing that move, you will usually catch the limb and then do something terrible to the person attacking. Yeah, and if you're um, getting hit on counter, then you're taking loads more damage. Right, and, and, and that's, that's the major counter, minor counter thing, which is unfortunately just, you know, the, the same term being used for different, two different concepts. Um, a parry, instead instead of automatically having a canned response, your character kind of throws the limb aside and knocks the attacker off balance. Yeah, dude. Whereas then you have time recovery time where you can uh, attack at an advantage, <laughs> right? Now, yeah, these boys what are Will too much was fun. just talking about was a fighting game concept called like major counters and minor counters, mm-hmm. where if you hit someone while they are in recovery animation from an attack, that's a minor counter, which usually does like bonus damage or have bonus properties. And if you literally interrupt someone else's attack with one of your own that's higher priority, that's a major counter, which usually gets additional properties, bonus damage. Um, for example, some attacks that'll knock someone down when you hit them will instead cause them to like clutch themselves in pain and crumple downwards, which is called a crumple stun. Um, and major counters in actual like PvP fights and counters and parries are a big part of kind of higher level play because high end fighting gameplay is a lot about mind games and predicting what your opponent will do. Yeah, so if you can hit them on moves. yeah hit them on counter and punish like jeez they are yeah, gonna have a right? bad time. Like for example, Tekken has a sidestep mechanic, and like if. If you are using an attack that has a very wide horizontal radius, and I try to sidestep, I may just get hit anyway. Yeah, if you're trying to roll out of a uh, roll out of a knockdown left or right, and yeah. you misjudge which way you're going, power bomb, uh, then you can have a bad time. Yeah. So right. after this chapter, I'm going to jump on Lee real quick and just show you right. my my rushdown style because right. I feel the need to reclaim my honor. <laughs> and I just love how much the two like just betray each other and like we're both like allied against the Jacks. Yep. Nah. <laughs> Later, Dad. Granddad. Whatever. Nani. No. And keep in mind, this was back in Tekken Four, right? Yeah, so we're, we're, we're playing like... Tekken Seven, and Heihachi not only is still around, he's still healthy. Yeah, that was Tekken. Was that PS2 <laughs> era? Or was that still PS1? Um, good question. I think it was PS2 era, but I'm not sure. Yeah. Because I know T3 and TT. I know T3 was blah blah blah. PS1. Blah 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 blah. Sorry, I'm gonna roll back and show off some uh, some Lee action with my custom yeah. character as well. I, I actually think though that this story mode is doing a pretty effective job of covering the history of the franchise. Yeah, dude. In a way that people who are longtime fans can appreciate, while while recreating enough pivotal scenes that you get an idea of what the characters' relationships are like, if you're totally new. Yeah, and I really um, respect that. And as we were saying, like that story element, uh, the story assist allowed you to like show off like one of the uh, the classic characters. Yeah. Right. So, and to give you an idea of how convoluted the tech end storyline is. The character Will is playing right now, Lee Chowlan, is Heihachi's adopted son, and therefore Kazuya's kind of adopted brother. Yeah. And guess what? They hate each other. I'm shocked and surprised oh. by this turn of events. 
at it. Um, can we also take a moment to appreciate how gorgeous this looks on PC? Yeah. I don't like I don't like the skin's hair. Oh well, I'm sorry you don't like my custom character. Fight. <laughs> oh. oh yeah, you're and and like it seems that the game is playing quite rap like quite smoothly too. Yeah, it's actually running at 60. I'm recording at 30 because my poor PC. Sure. Do you know if your server is also people in New Zealand or if your server is like serving America too? Uh, I'm Eurasia, so it's like uh, Australia, non-Japan, Asian territories. Wow, that's a really significant amount of like geographic space. Plus, you know, bodies of water in between and it's playing quite smoothly. Indeed. Oh, sorry. Fighting these, games. Uh, I've only played online the once, and uh, I right. actually managed to crush someone much better than me. So currently, I'm undefeated at Tekken. This is the right. uh, the unlockable items mode, where you sure. can level up. So you're up actually your... not playing against another player? No, lamentably. Okay, okay. I thought you were, because it displayed a name that looked like what someone would name themselves, rather than... Uh... Ah, so with this one, this is the treasure battle where you unlock uh, customizable items for your character, okay. and you fight other kind of custom characters. Right. Presumably, uh, I would guess that uh, the earlier battles are um, kind of staggered so that the AI is weaker and or the damage you inflict on them is much higher than the damage well, they inflict on you. Perfect. But you can see that my fighting style basically involves crushing them as quickly as possible. Otherwise... Yeah, Rushdown, Rushdown is a classic like kind of archetype in uh, many fighting games, right? Yeah, I and... play, um, I play as, uh, oh man, I can't even speak and fight. It's just... I play as a Buki in Street Fighter, so I sure. have to go for like Rushdown and Confuse. Right. Uh, so like, if you play like that, I'm surprised you're not playing like Kami as a main. Because she's also very rushed down, or um, Rainbow Mika, I think. Like, I, I actually haven't played much uh, Street Fighter in the last few kind of editions, but I understand that they're also kind of aggressive characters. <laughs> oh wow, they did. I'm not they, even they, they, sorry. <laughs> they did kind of an homage to. Uh, Oh yeah. It, it almost feels like a, an homage to Fist of the North Star. So Fred. Yeah. Thank you for coming with me on this this little adventure. And thank sure. you for me show off the story mode. That was carnage and I'm looking forward to getting more into it. Um, mm -hmm. Do you have any closing thoughts on Tekken 7 that you'd like to, to throw to the world? Like, what's really kind of interesting is like a few years ago, if someone said, we're going to have good fighting games on the PC, people would have laughed at you. Yeah, dude. And now, right. like, I'm st this uh, fight stick I'm using is actually a 360 fight stick, but because right. it's USB, it works and it's right. gorgeous. It's right. back, back from the uh, the Mad Cat's golden era. But there was definitely an era where fighting games were exclusively thought of as arcade and console things. How times and, have changed. Yeah, and it's a great time to be a fighting game fan, and you're definitely seeing a resurgence in, like, viewership and just titles, right? Like, yeah, MVC... MVC Infinite is due it out soon. Very soon, and, TM. And again, that's another thing where, like, until it was announced, no one really expected MVC three. Yeah. Right. And yeah, I'm, I'm happy we live in that world. So I would personally recommend Tekken Seven as a game that one picks up on Steam. Um, I'll probably throw some links in the doobly doo. And all I'm going to do is you can't see it, but I'm doing the most gracious of bows to you all. Thank you so much for joining us. <laughs> See y'all next time.